and welcome to Mark's blog number 10, uh, a week in New York, well, that's what we'll call this one. Um, so, we've been in New York about a week, uh, which is good. Um, this has been a, a really relaxing, calming, cool experience, um, so I thought I'd uh, catch up a bit. Uh, we're leaving tomorrow, obviously we'll be home by Saturday. Uh, but I thought I'd just catch up a bit, just so I can obviously relay a couple of experiences that I'm having, that we're all having, um, and so we can, uh, well, express myself. Um, so, here in New York, a uh, city that doesn't sleep, as they say, um, I hate to tell you this, does sleep, pretty disappointing. Um, when we're walking around at 4am in the morning, there's nothing open, it's a bit disappointing. Except for strip clubs, apparently, but we, we didn't go there, so it's irrelevant. Uh, so, while in New York, what have we done? Shopping. A lot of shopping. We have found a few comic book stores, uh, apparently one that's quite one famous. Comic one comic book store. Comic yeah, with the amount of stuff she bought, you'd, you'd think that there'd be more than one comic store. Uh, so, that was kind of cool. Uh, found a couple more... Uh, uh, gaming stores, I've never been around the place, uh, so and none of them really compare to us. One that compared really well to Mind Games was what Mind Games would like to be if it had older stock. Um, it had a lot of the old military games that I know the boss is fond of, uh, so that was kind of cool. Um, hell, I might even go back there and pick some stuff up because there was at least one thing there that was um, kind of old magic related, so that was kind of cool, but um, they don't do magic cards generally. Um, what else has been pretty cool? We did a tour of the island as a, by boat, so a nice cruise around the island. Uh, Megan's been posting photos of that. I, I, I'm not that sort of a guy. I'm, I'm the guy that holds his stomach and goes, Ooh. so, pardon me. I got through it without, a without any sort of, uh, upheaval or gastric anomalies, but, uh, it was pretty, very pretty, obviously. The, the photos Megan's been taking have been kind of cool. Uh, I have photos, I just don't know how to upload them on YouTube, so I haven't uploaded them. Yeah. And I'm not sure about Facebook because there's uh, some photos that I'd, sh I'd share I'd share with friends that I'm not sure I'd share with other people. And Facebook could be a bit odd like that, so uh, that's good. Um, I suppose I should actually put a bit more light on. It's actually not a bad day. Well, actually, when I say it's not a bad day, it's been hot and humid. And we've done everything by Subway. And not Subway, eat fresh, and we're not going there because there are jokes we could make, we're not going to make them. Uh, instead, the Subway system around here, uh, you know, we complain a lot about, about you know, our, our, our Met. You know, the, Met lead, the Met being odd, but uh, look, Leah and I missed an opportunity to go and see the Book of Mormon uh, because we were trapped in a Subway underneath the Hudson River. Go figure. <coughs> um... So, Leah, who's been recovering from being ill, um, which I mentioned last time, uh, has desperately tried to, you know, tr we're trying to do things, like go to theatre shows and stuff, but she, uh, she was very, very sick. And uh, us being trapped in a subway tunnel underneath a river, while a guy decides he wants to take a pee out of the ca- to go in between carriages and take a bit of a pee, uh, probably, probably the low life of, of, of this entire trip, uh, because it's just, it's not necessary. He could have held it. Um, it was just disgusting and wrong. Um, and we missed the show, which, which sucked. Uh, on the other hand, Megan is on a winning streak at the moment. Uh, I don't think we can, we, we, you know, she's winning. Lottery tickets, left, right, center. I'll be leaving these are lottery tickets to, uh, to theater shows, but... Uh, I don't think Megan could quite come off as being anything other than uh, stupendously amazing right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, this is a bit of a shout out to Megan. Megan, thank you for everything. Sorry, yeah. Four lotteries, six wins. Because, you know, twins. Go figure. Um... The impressive part is when she wins lottery, she's not even there for. Uh, 
this. But, but so she's been going. We've been going to the theater. Um, I think they've just won ticket to Les Misérables, uh, which would be pretty bit of a downer. <laughs> uh, so they're going to go see that tonight, probably. Uh, we're going to go back. We're trying to win the Avenue Q tickets, or worst case scenario, we'll buy Avenue Q tickets for Luke and I, probably, because um, I want to see Avenue Q. I think that'll be kind of cool. Uh, and I don't know where Luke is at the moment, uh, so sure he'll be somewhere else. Uh, so yeah. So other things we've seen. That besides guys peeing in subway tunnels, which is pretty awful. Uh, we saw some, something rotten? Or is it awfully rotten? Is it awfully rotten or something rotten? I don't know, I'm listening now. Um, which is a really good uh, take on, on the whole musical genre. Uh, it was very comedic. I hope it comes out in Melbourne. It probably won't. Uh, which, is, which is bad for us, because this thing is just the ultimate piss take. Of, um, of all the different various musicals, how silly some of them are. Uh, definitely also looks at Shakespeare, um, my favourite thief of all time. Sorry, Arsène Lupin. Sorry, Lupin, but uh, you will never be as good as uh, as good as the Bard who got away with it and is and is beloved all over the place. Um, which is kind of cool. What else is there that's going on? Uh, so we went and saw that. Uh, Luke and Megan have been to see The Book of Mormon and Aladdin and Leah and I went and saw Aladdin last night albeitly the two performances we've seen have been in boxes yeah you know like the Phantom style boxes and I must admit we tried to get boxes for Phantom because how cool would that be is you're in box number 6 looking down on box number 5 knowing exactly what happens it's kind of you know an in joke would have been really cool uh, couldn't get them Prices were obscenely expensive, um, and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't justify 200 bucks American, which is an extra 50%, so roughly 300 per ticket. Couldn't justify it. Um, rather spend my money on something much more pleasurable or enjoyable. Not that fandom isn't good, but it's not $300 good. I didn't pay to see Anthony Wallow for 300 bucks. I'm not paying to see some people I don't like, or don't know, I should say not like. You understand. Uh, so, tonight apparently, yeah, Avenue Q and Les Mis for two and two of us. Which order we go in is still to be determined. Uh, we've seen Hitman 47. That was a pretty shitty film. Spoiler alert. Boring as... Terrible. Terrible. Just boring. <laughs> um, bad video game streak continues. Uh... And we saw the MI5 thing, it was Mission Impossible, go figure. Same, same shit, different day. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty, pretty much it. Oh, okay, so then, Luke and I have seen the wrestling. We went to SummerSlam. Uh, for those of you who don't want any spoil, it's actually already happened, so I can't really spoil it. But if you haven't seen it, you know, well, you know, I want to pause it here or skip forward a bit. But, uh, to be blunt, uh... It'd be like the way I've, the way I keep telling the way I feel about SummerSlam is that we had all of this build up and all of these really some really good matches and then some really shitty matches, but some really good acrobatic and athletic and power matches that, that you know you, you cheered for. Um, and you know, going through the card, we had people like you know Orton, who normally is apparently really good, uh, so his match blowed badly. Um, we got to watch a tag four four man tag sorry four team tag match which is really good. Um, lots of high flying action, lots of power moves, lots of just lots of really good wrestling. Not a lot of you know oh he's in a clinch, oh look he's in the sleeper, oh look I'm getting bored. Um, it's lots of fast pace, lots of movement, lots of action. That's really good. Uh, and then we watch Rusev versus Ziggler and get bored again because. No offense, but he's a boring wrestler to watch. When Camel Clutch is your finisher, uh, you ain't got nothing, really. He's got some cool power moves, but isn't as entertaining as, say, Owens and uh, Cesaro, who uh, Cesaro was, was unfortunately as boring as Bat doo doo. Um, but Owens was fantastic. Well, lots of. Uh, it's like they, they told a guy who's my size, and they told him, look, 
We're going to get you to wrestle, but you need to do flips and stuff. Are you okay with that? And he's probably told his, he's told his opponent, you know, I'm going to do all this stuff to you, but, uh, you know, and it's going to hurt, because I couldn't imagine this guy running into you and cannonballing into you and stuff, and it not hurting. Because I know if I jump on somebody, it'll hurt them a lot. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go with... We'll go with it's a bad plan. Uh, so his match was entertaining. Well, well was entertaining. Uh, unfortunately, we saw a th triple threat with, like, The Miz and Big Show. And while The Miz was entertaining, uh, the crowd gave it to Big Show. And I'm a bit disappointed with that, because I like The Big Show. Um, but it seems that he's just everybody's whipping boy now. And that's such a disappointment. Um, you know, I remember when being the world's biggest athlete, being a big guy, mattered. And does it now? He's he's just he's just a joke, and it felt like a joke. Uh, and although the feed me more, feed me more guy, whose name is ultimately forgettable because I've forgotten it, uh, won and you know yay team go team. Uh, and then there's the Divas match. Now, how to describe the Divas match? Now, look, normally we're as a wrestling community, we're pretty down on the Divas. It's usually because they're pretty and can't wrestle very well. Uh, so you get a lot of headlocks, you get a lot of hair pulling, you get a lot of just boring things. Boringness. Um, but the Divas, especially with NXT, big fan of NXT, I think it's a fantastic initiative. Trips, number one, good idea. Um, they have moves. It's like they've got the full package. Um, when you know you're you're watching you're watching female wrestlers, and I'll use the term wrestler. I think that's a, an apt term. An apt term. Use proper power moves, not just. Oh, we'll do a couple of aerial moves because we're light. And we'll do a hurricane runner because I'm leader, or, or you know, I'll do, you know, some really lame-o moves, flap, elbow. Um, but instead, um, you know, doing some proper moves, proper power moves. You know, I'm watching fall away slams, I'm seeing backbreakers, I'm seeing, you know, good, powerful moves. Um, even the submissions are fantastic. Okay, you got the daughter of Ric Flair. Oh, I think, I think she's the daughter. Um, the relation of Ric Flair, who's, you know, doing woos and... Yeah, like full full bodied woo, and then, you know, into the figure four with a bridge, backbreaking bridge. I don't understand that, but it would hurt. It would also stop your opponent from trying to uh, flip over. I think, but, but that's another story. You know, I'm watching these girls do high quality moves. Now, I cheered, but the crowd didn't, and I think that's actually a problem with. Um, I think that's actually a problem with uh, women in in this particular business that they're not taken seriously if this had been a guy a group of guys wrestling and they performed half the moves these girls did the crowd would be on their feet chanting holy crap holy shit you know um, and that would have been amazing but they didn't and the match unfortunately was set off and, and okay there, there were a couple of very low light, low light moments in the, in the actual um, the match Watching them having to, you know, the face get dragged to the mat and, you know, put in headlocks for stupid amounts of time is boring. Vinny knows it, we know it, it's boring. So, if we can cut that crap out, um, the format, the, 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 the four-team tag thing showed that it can be done, that, that should just be the script for that sort of stuff. Lots of action. Um, yeah, which was kind of cool. Um... You know, I wasn't really much of a, of a Seth Rollins fan. Seth Rollins fan. Uh, in fact, he just looked like a cheap version of Triple H. Uh, I'd like to say I apologize to him uh, and to anybody that's heard me make those comments because um, I was wrong, very wrong. He is fantastic. He does aerial maneuvers. He does power maneuvers. He makes John Cena look good. Uh, and he makes John Cena look good by being able to actually take John Cena's hits and sell them. Uh, he hits John Cena with all the right moves. 
and and he looks good doing all of them. Um, and ultimately, he cheats with style, and cheating with style is uh, it's fantastic. So he was very entertaining, deserved to win. And John Stewart, we thank you very much. As much as your reasons for doing it, as you revealed on Raw, were boring. Uh, you doing it at all? The crowd was behind you, um, and it is good to hear three quarters of a stadium uh, chanting "Cena sucks" after some as, as kids basically start chanting, you know, "Let's go Cena," um, and having that that to be more prevalent, um, and him acknowledging that um, Cena acknowledges the fact that the crowd don't like him, even though he is a face and and everything else. They the the the, the crowd don't don't like John Cena, and, and that's really important. There was another match. I can't think of who it was who it was against because it obviously didn't register very well. Um, and then you had Undertaker and Brock and that. Look, it had some spots. It had some highlights. Um, it was reasonably good. Um, and then they ruined the ending. <coughs> and when you ruin an ending, um, it leaves people with a very bitter taste in your mouth. Um, yes, wrestling fans want take it a win, but we don't want take it a cheat a win. We don't want him to uh, think about what he's do, you know to, to, to get a, a gimme. You know we don't want to watch him tap out and then you know have him win because that just cheapens the experience even further. And to put it, to put it bluntly, I don't think that it was very well done. I don't think it was done. It's done right by either. Either take a Brock or, or even WWE. Uh, so Vinny, look, I, normally I'm a big fan of your work, but or trips, whoever wrote this crap, uh, but it was crap. It was lame, uh, and it left the audience feeling very unfulfilled. It didn't leave them hungry for more, which is what you want. It left them unfulfilled. Uh, so I felt unfulfilled, and it is a sad note when the rest of your pay per view has been reasonably good. To hear people going, this was the worst pay-per-view ever, Vince, I want my money back, how could you ruin things? And when you ask them why, they say, did you see the ending? If you were there, did you see the ending? Because if you saw the ending, you would know that this is why. Uh, and I think that's a bit harsh compared to the fact that the rest of the pay-per-view was very good. Uh, especially that tag match, which is fantastic. Um, which then leads us to, you know, Monday Night Raw was fantastic. You know, the return of the Dudleys, Sting, you know, it was, was, was amazing. And maybe wish that I'd bought tickets to Raw instead of going to, uh, uh, instead of, um, uh, perhaps going to SummerSlam. Uh, however, last night, Leah and I went and saw Aladdin. I want tickets. I want lottery tickets. Yeah. Uh, was draw number one. Number one. Uh, so that was kind of cool. It's always good to uh, be drawn number one in a ballot. Fantastic even, actually. It's really good. Uh, so we got cheap tickets in a box. Watch Aladdin. Uh, very nice performance. Uh, yes, I could be nitpicky. Yes, I could tear it apart. Yes, there were things that could have used improvement. Uh, but look, their genie was amazing. Uh, and just, yeah. It was a very good performance. I hope it comes out to Australia. Uh, it certainly deserves to, because it was really good. It also was fantastic. Uh, and lastly, what else did we do? Oh, we saw Billy Joel! Uh, notice how this is the last thing that I'm, I'm mentioning. Uh, Billy Joel was awful. I had amazing seats. In any other game, event, everything else, the seats I've chosen so far for... for oh, we saw the Yankees! Shit! Missing out on a couple of things, aren't I? Okay, so look, we'll go back to the Yankees first. Went to the Yankees, day in the sun, Yankees win 6-2. Um, it was a gorgeous day, I bought a giant finger, really cool, even though Megan still doesn't understand why I bought a giant finger, but I bought the giant finger, very important. Uh, Luke bought a cap, but I bought the giant finger, because the giant finger was number one. Uh, and they won. They were amazing to watch. It was a good game. Good game. Many balls were given away. Uh, atmosphere was cool. Uh, they're just really good. Um, it's really good. Uh, 
yeah, new chance. I just want to see George now and be able to go hip, hip, or hey. It was fantastic. It was just really cool, really funny. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good day just to sit down in the sun. Uh, the girls took some photos, but they quickly found seats in the shade and sat in the shade. Luke and I had just a great day in the sun. Uh, it was a really cool day. Really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but uh, back to Billy. So, so I've had some really good ideas. When, when I buy tickets, the tickets are good. We had good seats. Uh, Q, Q, uh, Billy Joel, possibly really fantastic seats. We could see the stage. Uh, this is before Billy came on. You can see the stage, nice upholstered leather, uh, nice granite slabs where you can rest your arm, put your, put your stuff on, cup holders in the seat, really amazing. Like I, was, I sat there thinking, geez, I've, I've locked out here for the price I paid, this, this is an amazing thing. And then the performance started, and <coughs> they obviously decided to turn all of the high beams on for the first section, for the first song. And uh, I couldn't see, and Megan couldn't see, and Luke couldn't see. Uh, and we sat there stupefied and blinded for the first eight minutes as he played his first song. Uh, and then another amazing thing happened. It turned out for the first half of his show, or almost two thirds of his show, we didn't know many of these songs. I knew a couple, uh, but um, but it turns out that he, uh, he he plays a lot of his. Well, there's a lot of stuff that, that would probably be very good. We would know if we lived in if we lived in America, um, but in Australia, you know what? They don't play a lot of Billy. They don't play a lot of uh, a lot of Billy Joel. Uh, at least not the stuff that that he played. So. Um, and I understand that. I understand that quite, you know, 100%. But there are some songs which I would have loved to have known that were very beautiful. Um, his piano work is amazing. Uh, and they brought out a world-famous violinist who has a... who, who is disabled. Um, and I need to look him up because he was fantastic. Uh, and he had a Stradivarius. And there's nothing like the sound of a Strat. It's nothing at all. What was worse about this performance, besides the fact that the first two thirds of the show we didn't know the songs, despite the fact that we've been blinded by by one, and then subsequently we've been reblinded as as things have gone on. No, the next thing was the fact that we couldn't hear it. His voice is muffled. It's all muffled. You can't still sing. So we didn't understand what he was saying. Guys next to us didn't understand what he was saying. Heck, I don't think anybody in our row understood what he was saying. He was, it was, we, we were trying to work out whether it was because he was too close to the mic or was it because the music was just really bad. And, you know, it was, whether, you know, but even when he wasn't doing music, the music was still beautiful. It was just, we couldn't hear his words. He needed to enunciate perhaps, or, or maybe they needed to turn down the music just a tad, or the sound just a tad, so that you could hear what he was saying. Um, so unless you knew the words, you, you had no idea what he was singing. Uh, which actually proved to be the case in a couple of songs where I knew the words, but uh, I definitely couldn't hear what he was singing. Um, I even taped a couple of them so I could see whether or not, if I turned the sound down, whether I could hear what he's, what he, what he's playing. Because it doesn't look like it at this stage, but I'm going to do that when I get home. So no, it was it was it was a disaster. Albeit the last third of the performance, look, he had he did Piano Man, the crowd sung that, word perfect. Uh, River of Dreams, which was fantastic. Uh, she's always a woman to me, which always reminds me of Leah because she's always a woman to me. Uh, you know, you an Uptown Girl. Uh, you know, about the only song he, oh, he did, we didn't start the fire. Which wasn't on the program. Well, which it was a bit odd. The program I got didn't have what he was doing. So he just made it up as he went along. And he literally gave the crowd choices. And it was kind of cool. Um, and he played some of the most out there hits. Oh, not so much hits. He just played songs that were... That were not his. So he played New York, New York. 
And that's okay, you're playing a New York state of mind, so I understand when you sing New York, New York, because you want, yeah, you pop in the crowd. Uh, but when he suddenly played Hot Town Summer in the City, I'm like, yeah, winning. And then he played Sherry Baby. Now, now for those of you who aren't old enough to understand that, uh, Sherry Baby is, a, is an old 50s song. I think it's a 50s song. Could it even be a 40s song? It is. It is old and it's awesome. And he played it as an intro to um, to Uptown Girl. Um, and he just some of his transition pieces were uh, were really really good. Um, yeah, it just shows you that he's he he is a performer. He is a consummate performer. Even though we didn't understand a lot of what he was saying, it was garbled. Uh, he still is just a consummate performer. Um, and the only disappointment I had is that he didn't play one of my favourite songs, which is "Tell Her About It." Uh, but he hit all these other high spots. It was just fantastic. Uh, yeah. So by the end of it, it was a really good performance. Good ending thus means that the rest of it wasn't a shonky. Vinny, take notes. Uh, so we, uh, yeah, so that's been the extent of our trip so far, at least as the, the, the uh, New York version of it. Uh, we're in a nice hotel now, as opposed to the uh, hostel, we're in. not that the hostel was bad, hostel was actually really good. Um, there's not, nothing, there, there've been nothing like what I've been envisioning, um, and this hotel room is amazing for the, uh, for the, um, the fact that we're we're in New York, uh, and I'll show you to you because this is just an amazing thing. Uh, what's amazing about it, and you're not going to notice it right away, but um, that is a long distance. Right? It's a long distance in this. This is a lounge room, so there's you know a bit of Rambo three action happening. The, the girls are in the, an actual extra bed with which have got three beds in it. Uh, and here's where I've been sleeping on this sofa bed. Sofa bed. Um, but it's a huge room. To have an extra room like this in, in a place like New York uh, is absolutely amazing. So there you go. Uh, a place we're staying in is called the Salisbury Hotel. Highly recommend it if you're this way and you need a place which has lots of room, which is reasonably cheap. Oh, Leah went to the Mayo Clinic. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the Mayo Clinic is, I fully understand, because uh, I don't really know what it is either. Uh, I'm sure it's a medical thing. Uh, the doctors may or may have done something there. Uh, okay, I'm being ignorant. I know I'm allowed to be a bit ignorant sometimes, because I'm an That was not stupid. Um, Alright, that's about everything. Luke's still not back yet, don't know what he is. Um, oh, okay, so we finished SummerSlam, Luke and I have been to the Hard Rock Cafe, we went to McGee's, which is the uh, prototype for uh, the bar from How I Met Your Mother, uh, so we've got a couple of shirts from there, we've uh, had a bit of spending, we saw Shakespeare in the Park, they did Cymbeline, that was fantastic, uh, yeah, everything we've seen so far has been really good. Having a ball, at least as far as New York is concerned, which is good because you know a couple of the other places we've been haven't quite been up to scratch, uh, and so we're really happy. And I can tell you right now, I am looking forward to going home. Not that I haven't enjoyed this trip; this trip has been an amazing trip. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing my friends and family, who I miss, and I'm also looking forward to having some fish and chips because I miss proper fish and proper chips some calamari and potato cakes, which is just me. Um, but I'm also missing, and more, oh, I'll say this, I'm missing bacon and eggs and toast that isn't sweet. And I'm missing, if you notice, notice how it's the food I'm missing more. Uh, and I'm missing fruit and I'm missing veg. I'm missing vegetables. Oh yeah, I'm missing vegetables. I'm looking forward to having mash and three veg and sausages, real sausages. Not that crap that they're serving here, but they're like, they're eating or they're big, and they're fat, and greasy, and ugh. Alright. So, back by Saturday, um, and I'll have hopefully some more tales for people who actually ask. 
Um, and we've bought a whole lot of shit, so probably expect presents if you can. <laughs> Alright, thank you, and thank you all for watching. Uh, there'll probably be one more of these when we're in LA, because we've got a bit of a stopover in LA, and I just want to talk about LA a bit, because LA sucks. Theoretically. Uh, so, uh, take care, and I hope that you and yours are having as much fun as me and mine. Uh, even more so. Alright, ta-ta.